Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to a sister's Ramadan. I am your sister Naima B. Robert and as always, I'm delighted that you've joined me today. So what are we doing in this series? We're on a mission, aren't we? To cherish and nurture our relationships with our loved ones while we still can. The central question of this year's show is, how can we as Muslim women use the month of Ramadan to improve our relationships? Relationships with Allah, with ourselves and with our loved ones and those around us. And in today's show, we will be looking at our relationship with our children. If anyone watching has a child or has children, then I'm sure that you will remember those earliest, earliest days. Maybe it was when you were trying for a baby. Maybe it was when you were getting pregnancy tests and seeing if you were or you weren't. Um, your hopes and your dreams for this child, what it was like to be expecting, what it was like to fall in love with your newborn. Subhanallah, what a miracle it is the love that blossoms in the heart of a mother when her child is born. I want to take a few moments for you to just remember that time and remember those golden days. Um, because for many of us, those golden days can seem like a distant memory. Unfortunately, human beings, we tend to fall into a rut whether it's the many demands that children have, whether it's lack of sleep, whether it's uh, our own expectations of ourselves or expectations of a spouse or family member, whether it's pressure from society, the role of being a mother can start to feel quite heavy. It's no longer this coveted, respected role that we had. We no longer feel like it's such an honor. It's now more of hard work. We go on autopilot and many of us fall into the very, very bad habit of simply wishing for each day to be over. Can you relate? Wishing for the night to come so that the children can be asleep. Wishing for the weekend when you will get some help from your spouse or your relatives. Wishing for the next stage in their development. You know, when they're going to be finally be able to do X, Y and Z. And if we're honest, a lot of us may experience feelings of resentment or wishing that we were somewhere else or were someone else or were doing something else. Motherhood can seem like a blur of never ending routines, responsibilities and tasks. The demands on our time and energy can leave us feeling drained and lackluster. We end up sleepwalking through our days, frustrated. We go through the motions, but in reality, we've checked out. There's no joy left, no excitement, no anticipation. And unfortunately, our children feel it. They can see, they can see that mummy is not happy, that she'd rather spend time on her phone than with them, that she's distracted at bedtime. SubhanAllah, pause. If this is resonating with you, you're not alone. You're not alone, but this doesn't have to continue. Because in this way, we run the risk of losing out on the rewards of being a mother, on the reward of nurturing the relationship with our children in this dunya and in the akhirah. And we run the risk of losing the reward of being parents in the first place. Let's reflect a little on the relationship between a mother and her child. Abdullah ibn Umar reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, Every one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. The leader of people is a guardian and is responsible for his subjects. A man is the guardian of his family and he is responsible for them. A woman is the guardian of her husband's home and his children and she is responsible for them. The servant of a man is a guardian of the property of his master and he is responsible for it. And no doubt, Every one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for your flock. So if we know that we have 
been given the task of shepherd. Showing up for our children as the shepherd means being intentional. It means being mindful. It means that we need to be present in mind and body. It also means that we need to have a vision for ourselves as mothers and we need to be actively working towards that vision. In order for us to be able to really make the most of this relationship, we have to actively take stock, take ourselves to account and evaluate our behavior, our attitudes, our reactions and be seeking to improve. And it's okay. Mothering is a work in progress, not a done deal. Because our job essentially is to help our children develop as we do. And we talked in another episode about the aspects of ourselves that we have been tasked with nurturing and cherishing. And it's the same with our children. The mind, seeking knowledge, maintaining the pure Islamic aqidah, constantly learning and improving. The body, eating healthfully, maintaining our health, looking after our appearance, exercise. The soul, regular ibadah, istighfar, self-care and acceptance. So our role as mothers is to enable our children to eventually grow up to be adults who can do what we've been tasked to do. Now, how does that relate to Ramadan? How can we use the month of Ramadan to nurture this relationship with our children and specifically to take care of this amana that we have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question us about? Well, I'd like to offer you three strategies. The strategies are, first and foremost, leading by example. Now, children, by their nature, especially young children, tend to copy, love to copy, love to be like mommy, love to be like daddy. So within our concept of Ramadan, how can we include the children? Whether it's fasting part of the day, helping to prepare suhoor, helping to prepare iftar, being involved in inviting people, praying during the day, reading a bit of Qur'an here and there, obviously listening to the Qur'an. Many families do enjoy beautifying their homes or doing arts and crafts that are related to Ramadan. But most importantly, I want to look at how we are involving our children in our own ibadah so that they can see, modeled for them, what they should be aspiring to when they are older. The other thing that we can do is to create a supportive environment for all of the above. Involving them in our ibadah, in our Ramadan activities is a way for us to instill in our children the qualities that they will need as they move on in life to be Muslims who take care of the amana of their own actions. So this is a time, my dear sister, for you to, again, use those strategies, the steps that I showed you, those four steps. And I'm going to go into more detail in this episode about how to actually put those steps into action. So your task this episode is to take some time to think about how you can use Ramadan to improve your relationship with your children. We're going to use the four steps again. The first is renewing your intention. Now, when I say renewing your intention, I would like you to go right back, right back to the beginning. Why did you have children? Why do you have children? What do you want your mothering to mean for you in this life and the next? These children, what is expected of you? What do you hope to achieve? What is your vision for yourself as a mother and for your children? What's important? What isn't? What takes priority? What doesn't? When you renew your intention and you remind yourself that essentially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us about these children and that this work of mothering is a role that we've been honored with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not written that you would be a mother, you would not be a mother. If he had not written that you would have three girls and a boy, you would not have those. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us, made us the shepherd of these children, then every single day I invite you to renew your intention as a mother, 
as the shepherd of your children, as the guardian of these children and the keeper of this amana. So I would like you to spend some time really thinking through because when it comes to our children, lots of other issues can tend to muddy the waters and very few of us do take the time out to purify our intention when it comes to our children. Whether it's to do with modeling a better for them, whether it's to do with teaching them, loving them, showing affection, communicating, disciplining. Why are you doing all of that? What is your ultimate purpose? What is your ultimate goal? Get clear on that. Then the next step is to slow down. Now I know how hard this is for mums, especially in Ramadan when there's so much going on and there's so many demands on our time from every, every which corner. But slowing down, cutting down on the multitasking, inshallah will allow you to reconnect with your child, to reconnect with the work that you're doing and enable you to really bring your full self to whatever task it is that you have at hand. Slowing down means that you are mindful, that you are present and that you are doing everything intentionally. And then if you remember, our third step is to take yourself to account. Again, at the end of every day, ask yourself, how did I do? Did I show up the way I wanted to? Did I show up the way I needed to? Did I make the right call here? Did I do enough here or not enough there? Take yourself to account and be real about it. And then the fourth step, press the reset button. If you had a tough day, if you had a day where nothing went according to plan, no problem. Ask Allah for help, make dua and recommit to do better the next day and do things differently. Well, that was a lot. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Jazakumallah khairan. I hope that you benefited. Please be sure to tell us what you think of this episode. Share your thoughts in the comments. Tag us on social media at Iman Channel or at Naima B. Robert and use hashtag Sisters Ramadan. Subhanak Allahumma Rabbana wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode when we are going to be talking about our relationship with our parents.